Hey, what's going on guys? This is part two of setting up the LEMP stack, the Linux, Nginx, MySQL, and PHP stack, which is really a web application stack for serving web apps on Linux. Much of the internet is done this way, although most of the internet is still using Apache. Uh, Nginx is a different web server. It's amazing. I'm probably going to go a little bit deeper into it because it's worth knowing. But for now, we're just sort of plowing through this project to get something set up and working. Now we've already got the first part. We've got Nginx installed and you can see the default web page here. It's working, hooray. Next up is installing MySQL, which is the database layer for our applications. So MySQL is basically a client server program. You install a server on your machine. So I'm already root, so apt-get install MySQL server. And then your applications are clients that talk to that server. So like the rest of the web architecture, you've got a server that's kind of handling the actual physical databases and abstracting all that stuff away. And then you've got clients that just say, hey, I've got some data, please store this. Or, hey, I'd like some data, please retrieve it. Okay, a password for the MySQL root user. Even in this demo video, I'm going to give this root user a password. People actually leave this blank and then they get just owned on the web and they wonder why. You need to always secure your MySQL installs. Okay, uh, we'll just say database. Very secure. Database. Okay. I'm gonna have to watch this video when I go to actually set up an application because I won't remember what the MySQL root user's password is. Once we've got the MySQL server running, what we're gonna do is set up its directory structure. We'll do that now. Uh, and I think we do that by saying MySQL install db, yeah. Pow, so it just uh, set up all the sort of basic stuff for the databases. And what I'd recommend on any production machine is that the very next thing you do is uh, MySQL security, there it is, secure installation, MySQL underscore secure underscore installation. And that will kind of go over and if you don't have a password set for the root user, it'll, it'll force you to set one up it will uh, go through and remove some of the test databases and some of the other stuff. Database. Hey, I still remembered. So no, we're actually not going to. So you enter the root password. It logs in as root at localhost at your MySQL database. And then it kind of runs this script to make things more secure and clean things up. So if you've already set up a strong root password, then you don't need to change it here. Uh, I would absolutely remove... Anonymous users disallow remote login of the root user and remove the test databases. Okay, it dumps you back out on the Linux shell. And that's that. So you have MySQL set up. You've got the directory structure and all the stuff you need to actually run MySQL. And you have secured your installation or at least done the very basic bits of that. I'm not going to cover tuning or anything else in this because there are literally people whose job is to do nothing except for tuning MySQL databases. It's a big area, and if you're interested in databases, you should take a look at it. We're going to move on to installing PHP, which is the programming language. It's the sort of VM or interpreter that runs to process uh, the programming code of these PHP applications. So, for example, uh, I think, at least until recently, um, you know, Facebook is written in PHP. WordPress is a PHP app. There are just ungodly amounts of PHP applications. So if you're looking to get into web programming, PHP is probably, from a business perspective, a good place to start. PHP also happens to be a t just fabulously terrible language. It's awful. It's, uh, it's horrible to read. It's hard to write well. Um, and there's just incredible amounts of shitty PHP code out there. Um, that's being just copy and pasted in applications. So a lot of it's terribly insecure. It's got all kinds of problems. And from what I hear, actually, a lot of the books on, you know, writing secure PHP code are actually quite terrible. So it's a rough ecosystem to be living in if you want to be a great programmer. But uh, it's something that's very useful to know because so much is running on PHP. Okay. Now here's the deal, because we're using PHP, we're not just using PHP, we're using a web server that serves static web pages, HTML. Now the way that we're going to cram PHP in there is to install 
used to be CGI, a common gateway interface, which is a way for the web server to talk to the PHP interpreter and say, oh, whoa, I've got some PHP code. Could you please interpret this for me and just send me back the result? And I will stick that into a web page and render it to the user because all I know how to do is render stuff, more or less. So basically, we're going to set up PHP, and then we're going to set up PHP FPM, which is uh, uh, FPM, Fast CGI Process Manager. And that'll sort of be the link between our web server and the PHP interpreter. Okay, so you've got the web server talking to the client's browser, essentially. And then you've got some PHP code on the web applications that we're going to be installing. The web server has no idea what to do with that, so we're going to tell it, hey, if you see some PHP code, pass it through PHP Fast CGI Process Manager, which will hand it off to the PHP interpreter and then give it back as whatever the result is going to be. And then you can happily shove that into a web page and give it back to the client's browser. That sounds weird. Don't worry. It'll kind of make sense. Okay, so we just need to install that, and that is app get install PHP 5. FPM, and this will obviously install PHP 5 as well. Uh, and PHP 5 MySQL, so that PHP can talk to the database. We're also going to install some extensions for PHP when we actually install WordPress, but we'll leave that out for now. We'll need like PHP curl and stuff like that, the extensions. So our CGI stuff is getting downloaded. And at the very least, every tutorial will tell you to do this for security. The only thing we're really going to configure for PHP is fine, FPM, I think it's the PHP in here. Search, whoops, search for, uh, hang on, i got to look at my notes here. Oh, that's right, uh, path info. Okay, so it basically means that PHP will help the bad guys get to running scripts that they shouldn't be running. Okay, okay, so you save this to zero, turn it off and save the file. And now just to demonstrate this, we will say uh, Etsy Nginx sites available default. I'm just gonna paste in this blob that I'm gonna give you as well, and then service Nginx restart. That should work. Okay, I had a syntax error before. I'm gonna give you guys this bit that I'm pasting. So we've restarted the Nginx service. By the way, this is because I had a terrible syntax error. We're just going to create a PHP info file to test PHP. It's the classic way to test PHP. So, um, cd ah, user share nginx html. And we will make a PHP info file. And this is just going to be some PHP code. We call the PHP info function. That's that. Save the file, PHP info. And this will just print out information about PHP's environment, um, about the interpreter, etc. There's going to be a problem, which is. Oh, this stuff is owned by root. Anyway, okay. I like to keep my websites at uh, var www. And I like each website to have its own, to be running as its own user who's part of the. Um, www group, they all end up like PHP and Nginx process. These things are all going to run into the same www data user. So it's not a huge security thing, but it just uh, it is somewhat helpful for users themselves not to be able to go into each other's directories. Okay. And uh, did we restart? Yeah, we did. Let's try localhost. PHP info. PHP info .php. Hallelujah. So what happened here? We sent this request. Nginx got the request. Nginx passed the request through PHP FPM, Fast CGI Process Manager, which called up the PHP interpreter and said, hey, I'd like to run the function PHP info. What can you give me back from that? And this is what comes back. So it's a bunch of HTML. It tells you all about your PHP environment. Please don't ever do this on a production server. Don't ever expose PHP info. Um, a lot of attackers, the first thing they do is upload or you know create a PHP any file so they can read out 
version numbers and environment variables and all kinds of interesting stuff from here so they can figure out what to attack, what's weak, what needs to be patched, and they can just look it up, find a vulnerability, and uh, attack the server, escalate privileges, what have you. Okay, that's that. Now you've got MySQL and PHP installed. Next, we're going to create a database uh, for a specific application. It'll be WordPress, and then we'll install WordPress. It'll be very easy. And then you'll be hosting WordPress on your own LEMP stack. So Linux, Nginx, MySQL, PHP, and then WordPress running on top of all that, making use of all of it. In the future, we'll talk a little bit about caching and doing things to maybe optimize WordPress. Um, because WordPress runs like a dog, it's just absolutely slow. It takes seconds, even on a decent machine, to generate pages often. It's horrible. So what you're going to want to do is turn on caching, and we'll talk about uh, how to do those things and how those things work. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.